Every day, over 350,000 new variations of malware hit the web. And while most organizations have attempted to mitigate these attacks, many antivirus and firewall technologies that worked in the past are no longer effective. Rocket IT helps you identify and update outdated technologies and processes that put your business at risk. To learn more about how Rocket IT can help protect your organization, click the link in this episode's description. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Thrive, y'all. I'm your host, Jessica Clayton, and I'm the marketing coordinator here at Rocket IT. Today, I have Darcy Johnson joining me today. Darcy, thank you so much for, for your time. Thank you, Jessica. I appreciate this opportunity to share a little bit more about the Gwinnett Giving Girls. Yes. And so Darcy is, like she mentioned, she is a chair. Are you still a chair of the Gwinnett Giving Girls? Yes, I'm actually a chair, but I was at one of the original members that started back in 2017. So yes, this is my first year to be the chair, but I've really worked really hard with this group to help it grow. And so it's just Mm -hmm. been an incredible experience. Oh, wow. And so for our viewers who don't know what the Gwinnett Giving Girls are, could you just briefly, you know, tell us about what the organization does and kind of what that inspiration was for you to even, you know, start it? The Gwinnett Giving Girls was birthed out of Leadership Gwinnett. So Judge Kaysen, Tracy Kaysen, as well as Jerry Hewitt Miller were the original founders and invited several women to come and join. And so what it was about is a giving circle. So we support nonprofits in Gwinnett County that support women and children. And so it's a great opportunity for us to learn about the different nonprofits that are available here in Gwinnett, as well as be able to give back. So for us, we do a donation of a minimum of $250. And then at the end of the year, we give out a grant for 5000 Oh, that's great. But it's been, yeah, it's been pretty cool because we started in 2017 where we gave our first grant. And then in 2018, we gave out another grant for 5000 And then in 2019, we had raised so much money, we gave away two grants. And then 2020, we knew was going to be our year. We had no idea it was going to be the year that we all shut down, but mm-hmm. we still adapted and we went very virtual. But we actually gave away a total of four grants last year. And so we were super excited to do that. And to date, we've given away $28,500. That is amazing. Wow. Yes. And so kind of how do you pick your recipients? Is there an application or? So they're nominated by either through the community foundation, which is who we're under the Gwinnett giving girls is under the community foundation. And so we ask the ladies to nominate different organizations. And then we will typically have, we only meet four times a year, which is super nice. So we usually meet in March and that's kind of a networking time for us to kind of get to know each other as well as bring in new members and so forth. Then in let's see, we do quarterly. So we just recently just had our other first quarter meeting where we heard three presenters. So they come in, they do a little bit about what their organization is, what they would do with the grant and how it'd be utilized. We'll do our next meeting again will be in September where we're here from three more. And we do record all of these. So if people can't make it to the meetings, they can actually go back online and watch the videos. Perfect. So after they watch the different videos, then in November, we send out a a survey to them. And basically, we try and keep it very simple. You know, which one seems to make the biggest impact or which one really tugged at your heart? And so it makes it easier when it comes time to giving those grants. Although we wish we could give every one of them a grant, you know, we typically look at the ones that have the biggest impact. Mm -hmm. But the cool thing that's come out of this that we never expected was that a lot of the ladies we're going and volunteering at these different events or the the different nonprofits, you know, so that was something we didn't see coming. And then the other interesting thing was last year when we did virtual, we had the different nonprofits all on one call with us. And so the different groups were able to hear each other and Mm -hmm. they started connecting. So that was a couple of things that happened that we just didn't even expect. And it was really Mm -hmm. a cool way. And of course, like I said, it's an education opportunity. So we're learning about resources that are, that are in our own county 
that we can share with others. So it is a, a learning experience for us, and we hope that our ladies will take it out and share it with the ladies that they know, with the families, friends, coworkers, and you know, see if there is a way they can support them, even if it's not through the Gwinnett Giving Girls, but through time or even their own, you know, gifts and so forth. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that's an amazing thing that you guys can not only give back, but also be a connector and help other people get connected as well. That That's an amazing thing. And so I also see that you're also the director of career experience at Gwinnett Tech. And so yes. can we just briefly kind of touch on how does how has your experience with the Gwinnett Giving Girls given you the skills needed to help prepare students in college? Well, I think it's all about giving back, you know, so a lot of times, and I was a student here at Gwinnett Tech, I'll just let you know, when I came back to school in 2008, I had no idea what I was going to do with myself, but anyway, came back to school, really loved Gwinnett Tech, always stayed connected, but when I was here, I won a competition called Goal, which is the Georgia Occupational War Leadership. And it was a public speaking contest. And so I won that, which provided me a scholarship to DeVry to get a bachelor's degree. And then I moved on to get a master's degree. Always loved Gwinnett Tech. So finally, I came back and I started working our foundation. So I learned a lot about philanthropy during that time. And so I worked there for about four years. And then I just became the director of LaunchPoint, which is career experience, internships, apprenticeships. And this year, we're moving more into that entrepreneurship. So by working with the Gwinnett Giving Girls, it's really, we are really trying to focus more on that, the younger generation and philanthropy about being connected in your community. So that's something that I really focus with the students here is not only are they building up their professional resume, but also thinking about those volunteer opportunities that they're making an impact in their community. Mm -hmm. I think today's youth is very interested about knowing what their impacts are going to be. And so, and it's a great way to educate, you know, so I think that's where it's been a great blend for me in regards to philanthropy, helping to, you know, instill giving back, learning about Mm -hmm. your resources. I think that's a skill you just always need, no matter where you work. I agree. And especially because, and not just knowing kind of how to get the resources, but where to go to ask for help to get those resources as well. And not be afraid to ask, you know, because you'd be surprised at what, what resources are available to you. You know, I think it's Mm -hmm. incredible what we have going on in Gwinnett County. Just never know. You just (laughs) really never know. And so how, especially going with that philanthropy aspect and giving back, how do you kind of balance keeping students focused on giving back to their communities while also having partnerships with local, regional, and global business partners? Hmm, Good question. Well, a lot of them are having a hard time with balance, you know, so especially during the pandemic, everything was virtual. So there were a lot of students aren't always a virtual learner. They like the classroom and, you know, interaction. So we're looking forward to getting back to classes here in August. But, you know, I think for them, it's just trying to find that balance because a lot of times they are parents and some of them are single parents. And so, you know, they barely have enough time to get to their studies, their work and taking care of their kids, you know, so there's a time and a season, I think that you are able to do that philanthropy kind of thing. So, but I think that, you know, any way that they can get connected and it's a great tool for your children, you know, to go and volunteer, even if it's, you know, at a women's shelter or at the food bank, Anything that shows that we give back because we are really blessed to have what we have now. And and there's a lot of people that don't have just, you know, don't know where dinner's coming from Mm -hmm. or, you know, getting ready to head back to school and they don't have school supplies. You know, so I think it's a great way for parents to also use that as an opportunity. It doesn't have to be every day, every week. It could be once a year, just something Mm -hmm. that shows that we give back. I agree. I think it's very important to not only take from the community, but to be a to be a fulfilling member of the community as well. And there are so many different things too, you know, Jessica, mm-hmm. is that there are just there are so many different ways to get connected and and you know, being able to, you know, if you were had the opportunity, Jessica, I want to invite you. If you want to come, I'd love to have you at the Gwinnett Giving Girls. But what it is is when you 
get to be exposed to see like what some of the different things are. Some of it could be just as basic as helping somebody get a shower, a haircut and some clean clothes, you know, and that means the world to them. Oh, just basic necessities, you know? So when you're exposed to these different things, different things are going to affect different people because they've been impacted by it somehow. So those are the way that a person can find what benefits them, not benefits them, but what really makes them connect and, and feel useful and impactful. Mm -hmm. I agree. And so you did mention that there might be something, some new developments coming up with the entrepreneurship aspect of it. And so what are you guys aiming towards kind of changing or what can students look forward to in maybe not this upcoming school year, but maybe in the near future? Well, I'm going to, you're going to be the one of the first people to hear about this, but we're actually going to be doing a shark tank here at Gwinnett Tech. Oh, so I'm really excited about that. And so we're looking at some different partners that are help coming in and helping us because, you know, a lot of our programs here are students are thinking about being their own boss, going into that entrepreneurship. And so while we do have a component here, it really doesn't walk you through the steps of getting your own business started. And then we'll only select about six or eight of the students to actually present their ideas. So we're hoping we're going to be getting students that are either doing a startup or maybe they already have a business and they're ready to take it to the next level. So we'll be doing that, giving away a cash gift to help them with their business and you know, just kind of walking them through that process of what it would look like and, you know, bringing in some mentors and professionals to kind of help them. So I love that we are always innovative and looking for Mm -hmm. new ways to enhance the the resources here at Gwinnett Tech. Wow. So that's going to be really fun. Do you guys know how you're going to the parameters or the requirements for the application process or just kind of randomly picking students? Oh, no, there actually is going to be an application. We start back to school August the 9th, and so they'll have three weeks to fill out an application and apply. So no matter if they're chosen to do the Shark Tank, they're still going to have the opportunity to work with mentors and to get their program or their business plans written up because we want to help as many as we can. But the ones that are further along, really ready to move forward, that's the ones that will be chosen to be presenting at Shark Tank. That's going to be great. I can't wait to see, you know, how well that does. And hopefully that can be an annual event if it does well. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, Mm -hmm. absolutely. I'm not an entrepreneur, but I tell you, I'm learning a lot. And I'm learning about my resources. (laughs) That's for sure. You just never know how much goes into even the smallest things. It's it's really mind boggling sometimes. Yes, definitely. Darcy, you've shared a lot of great information for our viewers today. Is there anything else you would like them to know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, the Gwinnett Giving Girls always has an opportunity to bring in new members. So typically in March is when we have our first meeting. And so if you're interested, I hope that you will reach out to me. You can either reach me at Darcy Johnson at GwinnettTech.edu, or you can reach me through the Community Foundation. So. Either way, we'd love to have you join us and to join up with other women, professional women in our in our community that are interested in doing something to give back, but may not have a lot of time. Uh, but it's a great way to educate yourself and about what the resources that are available. And again, we want to just encourage you to find the one that touches your heart and get involved and do something to give back in Gwinnett. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for your time, Darcy. We're going to make sure to leave links in our description box to to all of the resources that we have.